Hi, my name is Jeff with Duda Labs. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch our video navigating the GUI. The GUI is categorized into two groups of configuration settings, basic and advanced. The basic settings is a subset of configuration settings for general use case. The advanced settings grouping is the comprehensive group of general use and both general use and advanced configuration options. And we're going to show you both here tonight in our initial walkthrough for initial configuration of the radio. This is the comprehensive list of all the basic settings in the radio. Um, the different grouping, status grouping, uh, network configuration options, services, and administration. We won't go through all these tonight. Uh, we'll, we will in future video. What we will go through are the, the initial configuration settings you'll utilize uh, for initial, initially configuring the radio. This is a comprehensive list of the additional advanced configuration options. These are in addition to the general use options available in the advanced settings grouping of the radio. We'll go through a few of these tonight with the, for the initial configuration of the radio. The remainder will be covered in subsequent videos. These are the initial configuration settings we'll go through to get started, get the radio out of default mode. And we'll start with the basic settings status overview. So let's navigate to that, to the radio and start configuring. When you initially log into the radio, you're brought to the basic settings option menu, status, grouping, and the overview page. This is the basic um, overview page and dashboard for the radio parameters and the radio, the radio configuration. Uh, status system actually gives you the, the host name of the radio, the model, in our case it's an external radio, and the firmware version. We scroll down. We've got the network interface that's active right now, uh, the physical interface. Right now it's Ethernet Zero is the actual network interface to the radio. The wireless description tells us that the mode is mesh point, so our default mode for all of our radios is mesh. The default mode indicates mesh mode, and what the what the center freak, what the uh, channel, what the uh, operating channel is at channel 7, 2.4 gigahertz. And what, in terms of reference to the local node, what associated nodes are connected directly to it. And it gives us basically signal to noise level, the receive level here, signal to noise, and the modulation rates for each of the uh, associated nodes. In this case, we have two nodes associated with the local radio. One thing we'll want to do is change the host name. We'll want to make it something more uh, logical uh, rather than just a MAC address. And we'll show you how to do that. And that'll be, that will be done in the advanced settings grouping. We'll show you how to do that here shortly. The next thing we'll do is we'll go to the network configuration section where we can go ahead and go to a simple config where we can change mode, which is kind of the first thing we'll do from a design standpoint if we want to make any changes to the current mode or change the mode itself of the radio. That's where it'll be done. So we'll navigate there. So to get to network, um, we go to the network configurations grouping to go ahead and get to the simple configuration menu where we can look at the mode and make any changes accordingly. Okay, we're there on um, the simple config. If we look in the drop down box here, this gives us the list of options for mode. The default mode, as we mentioned, is mesh. Although the top menu item is WDS access point, that's not uh, the configuration currently. It just happens to be the first menu option in the table. Uh, we are actually in mesh mode. Should we want to change uh, to WDS access point and WDS client mode? For star topology configuration or point-to-point -point setup, we, we would do this. We would set each of the radios here to the appropriate configuration option. Or if we just want to make changes to the current mesh topology, we could do this here as well. And if we want to change the mesh ID, password, uh, we can look here. We could set up the, the channel band, the center frequency, and also make changes to the channel bandwidth. Um, I prefer to make the changes to the radio in the wireless section, which we'll do next. Uh, but just to show you, this is the, the mode section uh, of the simple configuration menu. 
how to navigate to this to the wireless menu where we can go ahead and make changes to the radio itself okay we're in the wireless section uh, overview we can go ahead and go on edit to make changes So this is where we can make changes to the uh, mesh rider radio, um, WN0 in the case of the external node. And the basic settings are as follows here. Um, we've got the ability to enable or disable transmit power control. It's, uh, it's on by default. Uh, this allows us to uh, reduce power in, in the case of where nodes may be in close proximity, less than four or five meters apart. Um, this allows the radio to automatically power down, not to overdrive the neighbor node. Uh, however, in a mesh configuration, this will also shrink the mesh cell size, so you might want to consider uh, disabling this depending upon your mesh topology. This will become a factor. Uh, distance optimization is another parameter that is set by default at 4,000 meters. This needs to be longer than the longest link in the mesh. And this is also where we can set our channel settings um, on the default out of default which is channel 7 uh, and also channel bandwidth that can be adjusted here as well additionally we can set the country code from the generic government domain to whatever country we're in the United States or wherever the country code is for these devices being installed The next set of uh, configuration changes we'll set up will be in the advanced settings grouping uh, system where we can change the host name, backup flash firmware, self-explanatory, we can back up the node or, or actually upgrade the firmware. And then also in the network config where we can uh, talk about dynamic mesh where we can actually um, add a license key to enhance the mesh performance and then the mesh map. So to navigate to the advanced settings grouping, we click on advanced settings here and it'll open up our, a new menu, a set of options. Now that, we're in, now that we're in the advanced grouping, we can go down to system. And system. So here we can change the host name, in our case, external node. And we'll have to save and apply. The next adjustment or configuration change we'll make is to actually upgrade firmware. We'll show you how to do where to go to do that. So if we scroll down a little further under the advanced settings, uh, backup flash firmware. Okay, we've landed there. Uh, there's a few things we can do here. We can either, uh, in addition to upgrading the firmware, we can actually generate archives or configurations, download the current configuration, or restore a uh, save configuration to the to the same node. Also, we can, uh, in this page, we can also perform a reset to defaults, uh, factory default settings. And then again, if we scroll down here, we can browse to our, our downloaded upgrade uh, firmware image, store it here, upload it, and when we do that, we'd want to uh, we'd want to uncheck keep settings for the latest version of firmware before we up, before we upload it. And at that point, it will take all the new configuration settings overwriting the old. Now, as I mentioned, we have the option here to go and enable dynamic mesh. What that is, it's it's a mesh performance upgrade. It's a licensable feature. It's keyed, and we can upgrade our current mesh rider with dynamic mesh capability which one of the features there is dual redundant streaming between nodes, which allows us to do zero packet loss roaming. So again, it's a license feature, and we can upgrade it with a license key here in the advanced settings section, which we'll go to now. So under network configuration is where we will find the dynamic mesh license op upgrade option. Under dynamic mesh. Now that we're here, we can just go to the license section, and this is where we can load our key. This current this node actually already has a license on it, but should you have a, a, a new node, you could upgrade and browse to where you've stored your downloaded license key and configure this now to be a dynamic mesh enabled radio.
So once the key is uploaded, you go back to your mode area, simple configuration, which we showed you earlier, and enable dynamic mesh. And now with the key loaded, dynamic mesh enabled will function and the nodes will be in dynamic mesh mode. The last thing we'll show you is the mesh map where we can see the actual uh, connection diagram for the, the mesh topology. And again, this can be done here in, under the advanced or under the basic settings. So we'll go there now. So under network configuration, we'll scroll down and we'll go to mesh map. Okay, we've opened up the mesh map. We kind of adjust the topology here. It kind of shows you the, the, the mesh, the wire diagram between the nodes. If we scroll over a particular circle, it'll tell you the node in particular. This is why we changed the node name or the host name to something more logical. So it has, so these actually have meaning and not just a MAC address. Uh, so that's the radio. And then if you go to an adjacent link, it'll give you the average RSSI value between the nodes. If you look down at the lower part of, this, of the screen here, you'll actually see the actual RSSI in each direction. So um, between the external radio and its neighbor, which happens to be the far wearable, uh, we've got uh, RSSI is indicated in both directions. So this is the function of the mesh map to give you an idea of, of the connection and the link quality between the connected nodes. I want to thank you again for taking the time to view our video on navigating the GUI and initial configuration options.